Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this session, I shall be discussing on the extension headers available in IPv6. In the previous session, I have explained the different fields that are there in IPv6 header. There, one field is called as the next header. So, what exactly is that next header is all about in this particular session. The next header field of IPv6 base header. This is what I have written the heading. Now, the next header, we can call it by the name as extension headers. So, depending on the requirement only in the header form, in the header part of the IPv6, that is in the payload part, these extension headers get included, which are the different extension headers and the quotes, I have written it in the bracket. For each of these extension header, these are the header codes. The first one is the hop by hop option. Hop by hop option is once again consisting of three different options. One is the pad one, another is called as the pad n and the third one is the jumbo payload. So, these are the th three different options available in hop by hop. So, what exactly uh, for what purpose these options are used? Pad one, basically this pad one and pad n are used for alignment purposes only. If that particular option is having a shortfall of one byte, okay, then we go for this pad one option. If it is having a shortfall of more than one byte, then we go for the pad n. So, in simpler terms, you can say that it is basically used for the alignment purposes, pad 1 and pad n. Whereas, when this option jumbo payload is used, the payload part of IPv6 consists of 65,535 up to. In case, if it is exceeding this particular size, then this extra, that is the huge size of this uh, uh, payload can be specified in this jumbo payload option. And the word hop by hop option also means the source is, if this is the source and if this is the destination, hop by hop is what router by router, which are the different routers that are there, the intermediate readers. The source wants to convey the information about some management and the debugging or the control functions. If the source is interested in conveying this information to all the routers that are there in the path, then this option is okay included, hop by option, hop by hop option. But if the source does not want the intermediate routers to know this information, then only it goes for the next one that is the destination option. So, which indicates what the intermediate routers are not given the access to for that information, but only the destination host can have access to that information. So, this is the meaning of the second option destination option. The third one is the source routing option. So, source routing option was there in IPv4 also, but under different headings. We, if you remember, it was like um, fixed source route, loose source route. So, the, these two concepts are combined in the source routing option of IPv6. Fixed source route is what the source has decided that the datagram should be visited by all the routers that are, dis, that are, that are included in the packet. It is already decided. So, the datagram visits only those routers that are specified in the packet. It is already fixed. Loose source route is what the datagram has to visit all the routers that are mentioned in the uh, packet that is the fixed source route on option only. But apart from that, it can visit other routers as well. So, that is the name given as loose source route. So, those two concepts are combined here in the source routing option for the in IPv6 and the code is 43. Fragmentation option is there. Now, in IPv4, completely we had what I uh, fragmentation itself like uh, related to fragmentation, we had three fields in IPv4. But here it is treated as an option. That means my, uh, there is no compulsion that every packet should get fragmented. Depending on the MTU only, the packet has to get fragmented. So, for whichever packets the fragment is need, fragmentation is needed, that becomes like, like an optional field. That is why it is included under the extension headers. But one main difference is there in the concept of fragmentation here. In IPv4, the packet was getting fragmented even by the intermediate routers, isn't it? Because depending on the MTU size, the routers used to divide that fragment, divide the datagram into fragments. But here, only the source has got what the authority to fragment. The source has got the, so this one, this is the source, this is the one which is going to uh, fragment a datagram, not the intermediate routers. Then definitely you will be wondering if the packet is fragmented by the source and the routers in between are not able to accept the packet because of the MTU which is permissible for each of these routers, then what will happen? For that reason also there is a solution, the source will first carry out 
the path discovery mtu tech path discovery mtu technique that means it will first try to find out what in that path which it wants to send the packet what is the minimum size of the mtu so depending on that size only the fragments are uh, available that means the datagram get divided into those the size of those fragments only and with this path discovery technique the packet will travel uh, successfully to the destination but definitely why we are doing is see if at all if you are allowing for all the routers also to carry out the fragmentation to carry the fragmentation also requires some time and already we have told that ipv6 is mainly supporting what the real time audio and video messages we do not want more time to be spent by the routers in processing so if the routers skip this part of fragmentation then the packets will get processed fast that means it will speed up the processing there will not be much delay and it will reach the destination in time. So that is the main reason for including the fragmentation option and this is the difference. Authentication is included in IPv6, it was not there in IPv4, mainly it serves two pur purposes. First, it wants to know that the sender is a genuine fine and the content of the message is intact, fine, it is not at all corrupted. So that way these two uh, purposes are served in the authentication. Encrypted security payload, we want the packet to be, the contents of the packet to be more confidential. Hence, we require the packet to get encrypted and this is our main requirement. Normally, today we are dealing with every day, if you see all the transactions are in the digital form, most of are the financial transactions and we want our complete information to be more confidential. So, this IPv6 protocol supports this feature through this option security, encrypted security payload. So these are the different codes that are available for each of the extension headers. Hope this topic is, uh, this uh, the explanation is useful to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.